Hey guys, Bitcoin Dad here. <laughs> Crypto Dad here. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for the live Q&A from LA every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, let's get going. Uh. Okay, sorry about that flub when I started. I was reading an article on Bitcoin and totally lost who I was, where I was. Uh, a Cornelio Martinez, thanks for joining us. Uh, I believe you're right, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, hey Shahid, Paul G from Poland, Parlay Cross. Um, Parlay's uh, ripping a question out right off the bat. Uh, Celtic FC fan, thanks for joining us. Uh, so let's get to that. Uh, if I buy a Ledger Nano X or a second Nano S, can I use the same? 24 word seed phrase is the first one. It makes it simple and keep just different coins on each device. Uh, yes, you can. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's go over to uh, this screen. All right. Yeah, so the question is, can I buy uh, a Ledger uh, Nano and uh, set up the device uh, with a 24 word recovery phrase and then buy a second Ledger Nano S and use that same 24 word recovery phrase uh, but uh, just restore to the second device and yes you can uh, so basically you would end up with two devices that are sharing the same 24 word recovery phrase uh, really what they're sharing is the same master uh, key uh, when this thing is initialized, it creates this uh, master key, which I believe is 256 bits. And then that key, uh, which is this huge long number, sorry about that, is uh, it is given to you in uh, human readable format in that 24 word uh, recovery phrase. But uh, when you use that 24 word recovery phrase, to restore, it basically just restores that 256-bit key on the device. And then your second uh, part of the question is, could I just use the same mirrored uh, master key and then have multiple wallets, uh, different wallets on one and a different? And that's true, you can, yeah. The private keys for all of the wallets would be on both devices, but you could put some apps on this device and some apps on this device and uh, you know, spread off, spread, uh, spread your wallets across uh, more device. And yes, the the new one will be the same. Uh, the new one will uh, use a 24-word recovery phrase when it's initialized. And so you could either uh, initialize it as a new device or um, restore from a 24-word recovery phrase. Uh, I uh, pre-ordered one, so. I'll have mine in March, and uh, I'll go through the initial setup, and uh, maybe we'll give that one a shot. You know, we'll restore from one of my uh, existing 24-word recovery phrases, and see what happens. Uh, so yeah, uh, and uh, the Ledger Nano X supposedly uh, can hold 100 apps, and that will kind of reduce that need to have uh, multiple ledgers, if that's why you use multiple ledgers. Some people use them because they can't fit all the apps they want to use on one. Other people uh, have separate ledgers that store separate coins. Uh, they keep one in a safe place, who knows. Um, or they just have mirrors of the same one as a backup and they keep their backup in a safe place. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to have more than one Ledger Nano S. Uh, so by the way, the Ledger Nano X is coming out. Uh, it is available for pre-order. So if you want to uh, check the description of my video, there's uh, my affiliate link. Um, if you're interested in buying a Ledger, I recommend buying it directly from Ledger. And my affiliate link will take you right to their website. Uh, I do get a small commission when you use my affiliate link but it doesn't cost you any more than it would if you'd have just 
gone straight there yourself. So um, I humbly ask you uh, if you're interested to use my affiliate link. Uh, okay, Grand Illusion is here again. Good. That's good. And so let's talk a little bit about the news. I told you I was <laughs> I was reading an article about Bitcoin right before I uh, started up the live stream. And <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this briefly. We hear a lot about this. And this was uh, this article was written in May, May 30th, 2018. And it's all about the fact that Bitcoin uh, uses a lot of electricity. And you hear a lot of uh, people bash Bitcoin, and they say that it's, uh, you know, it's an energy hog. It's killing the environment. Uh, to wit, there was an article uh, written in the Guardian. Uh, this is the uh, <laughs> this is the rebuttal to the article. Here's the original article, uh, a pretty recent article about Bitcoin uh, using up too much energy. Um, and it's very interesting because uh, the re and we've all heard this before, right? Um, the article that I was reading, the rebuttal to the article, points out several facts about uh, this issue, uh, and so it, it gives some links to an article by a professor, um, a science professor, <coughs> professor, who talks about. Uh, you know, Bitcoin does require a lot of energy uh, right now, uh, but the calculations that uh, are required to uh, generate Bitcoin, to mine Bitcoin, to uh, generate transactions and uh, blockchains, uh, new blocks and everything, <clears throat> that, that process could be improved uh, and streamlined and uh, made more efficient. So to say that, uh, you know, the technology is at a standstill and it's just going to keep using power, the same amount of power or more, is uh, it's not a valid argument. You know, uh, computer technology gets better. Chips get better. So uh, if everything else stayed the same, they, it would eventually use less and less power over time as the algorithms improve and the technology and the chips improve. Uh, but... Uh, when we compare what how much Bitcoin uses worldwide, it pales in comparison to how much banking uses. Uh, so the current system for banking uses uh, 100 terawatts of power annually, and that's over three times the amount that Bitcoin uses. Uh, so there's a lot of industries that use electricity. Uh, I love this little... Uh, quote that this guy has here. I don't know where it is here. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. Amazon uses electricity. They aren't killing the planet. Facebook uses electricity. Google uses electricity. Your sister uses electricity. Everybody uses electricity. It's fine. It's not killing the planet. And the price of clean, renewable energy sources like solar are absolutely collapsing while the technology gets better and better the same way as microchips have been doing. So, uh, yes, the entire planet uses electricity. Uh, and sources of electricity are getting more efficient. Uh, solar power, geothermal power, um, water power, dam power, whatever. Uh, I guess that's part of geothermal. <clears throat> So uh, it's kind of a bogus uh, bash to say that Bitcoin is killing the planet. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was a very interesting article. Uh, let's see. News for today. I always click that, don't I? Uh, interesting uh, point. Uh, daily Bitcoin transactions on darknet markets doubled throughout 2018. Uh, so if you know, uh, if the Bitcoin uh, started out as, not started out, but the use of Bitcoin was prevalent on uh, deep web uh, markets uh, because uh, people that were on the dark web 
wanted to be anonymous and they didn't want to be giving out their credit card numbers and addresses so they used Bitcoin as we know Bitcoin is not totally anonymous and you can be uh, Bitcoin transactions can be traced uh, by uh, the NSA uh, police uh, government uh, it's not anonymous it's not totally anonymous so uh, that's that's a whole nother issue but on the dark net uh, a lot of people uh, use Bitcoin and it's it's uh, well um, designed to be used on the dark net so uh, and that's mostly where it became popular uh, and so this article points out that over uh, and this is a Reuters article this is a mainstream article uh, that the use of Bitcoin on the dark net doubled through 2018 now I don't know where they got their data uh, but it is a little bit of a Bitcoin bashing or article because they always like to point out that Bitcoin is used on the dark net and that it facilitates criminals and money laundering and drug and uh, human trafficking. You know, just they they want to uh, without really uh, also pointing out that cash is used much more for those nefarious activities than Bitcoin. Cold hard cash is still king, guys. Uh, so anyway uh, that's uh, but if you read between the lines that's a good uh, n that's good news for uh, people that are uh, Bitcoin adopters that the use of Bitcoin has uh, been increasing even in the uh, the bear market of 2018 all right so let's see what, what else we got here uh, here's an interesting one you can uh, buy Bitcoin at some grocery stores in the US I'd like to point out that uh, there. I'm glad that there's a lot of these Bitcoin uh, kiosks in malls and grocery stores. It, it's good for uh, you know recognition and adoption. Uh, but the problem that I'm seeing is a lot of these kiosks are implementing uh, KYC protocols, which means when you go up and you try to buy Bitcoin with cash. You have to scan your ID, you have to hold your uh, ID up next to your face and verify that it's you and everything. So they're sort of forcing you to uh, not be, be non-anonymous, right? Or, or at least not pseudo-anonymous, right? The whole idea of Bitcoin is that I can spend uh, Bitcoin without having to give all that information to someone, right? That's the beauty of Bitcoin, is that I can send it to you and uh, I don't have to tell you who I am, where I live, all this other stuff. That's what credit cards do. You know, they have that vulnerability is that I have to give my life story to any website that accepts credit cards. Bitcoin is not like that. Uh, so these uh, kiosks that are uh, forcing you to uh, verify your ID in order to buy some Bitcoin are kind of uh, not in the true spirit of Bitcoin. Now, there are some of them out there that the only thing you need to do is give them a Bitcoin address, right? You put in your money and then you'll, uh, you hold up your Bitcoin wallet and it scans in the address and it sends it without, uh, you know, any ID or anything else. So if you're going to buy Bitcoin from uh, a Bitcoin ATM, uh, check it out. Make sure it's not one of those dumb ones that wants you to scan your ID. Reuters is propaganda. Yeah, I agree. Reuters is propaganda. Uh, and yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, propaganda out there, uh, anti-Bitcoin propaganda. And of course, why wouldn't there be? You know, it's uh, it's a new technology that's going to undermine a lot of our institutions. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Uh, oh, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, the Brave browser. Now, you know, you guys know I use Brave. Uh, and I'm, I really support it. And they used to use uh, Mozilla as their foundation. Now it's Chrome-based. So I'm using the new Chrome-based uh, Brave, right? So if you go to uh, Brave Adblock, no, it doesn't. Let's go to uh, Settings. And when you go to Settings and you go down here to Ad Control, you only have Block Ads and Allow Ads. Uh, the earlier version, the Mozilla version, had uh, view Brave ads, 
which were customized ads that respected your privacy. So uh, it, when they switched over to the Chromium-based Brave browser, that they sort of lost that feature. They're sort of building it up from scratch. So this article here is that Brave will be implementing the customized ads that pay you for watching ads. You'll get rewarded with BAT or uh, basic attention token. And uh, they've implemented it in uh, their developer version. And they're supposed to be rolling it out, um, I don't know, in the next few months or so. Uh, Brave version one, uh, I'm not sure exactly. Anyway, Brave is improving, uh, sort of getting back to where they were. So uh, that's good news uh, for all of you Brave browser users out there. Uh, you know, Brave browser blocks ads and tracking. So, uh, and it's uh, usable. Tor is good for uh, blocking ads and trackers and giving you anonymity, but it's a little bit inconvenient to use, right? It's, it's not like your, your normal web browser. You want to be able to log in and out of your stuff and check your mail and do your banking and all this other stuff. You can't really do that in the Tor browser. You can with Brave, right? So uh, I like Brave. It's a nice uh, midpoint. And let's see, what else is going on? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I, if you, I think we talked about this last week. Yes, have two Ledger Nano S with the same seed. That's good. Uh, there was an article about Russia buying a bunch of Bitcoin to avoid U.S. sanctions. Uh, and this is a mainstream <laughs> telegraphy, I guess. And then, uh, what's this other one? Uh, Fortune, uh, talking about Russia considering the shift to Bitcoin. I guess the report is that they were going to buy $10 billion worth of uh, Bitcoin. Well, I think I even mentioned it last week, but mm, not not quite right. Uh, Russia will probably is probably not planning a 10 billion Bitcoin buy. This was a report um, by just some uh, economist, uh, Vladislav Ginko, who works at the state-funded Russian Presidential Academy of National Economy. Uh, he's saying Bitcoin, uh, Russia should buy Bitcoin, but there's been no confirmation from the Russian government or anything else that this is actually happening. So it's a little bit of uh, a jump the gun kind of a thing, right? So if you uh, were thinking that now's the time to buy Bitcoin because it's going to the moon when Russia buys $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, uh, that's probably not going to happen. They, they may, they may not, but we don't, that's not, it's just sort of a speculative announcement. And then it got picked up uh, by these other uh, websites, right? They're referring back to the original uh, statement by this guy on speculation. So always read your articles carefully. Look to see uh, where uh, their, uh, their sources are, right? And let's see, where else are we? I got a couple of little things I want to do tonight. Some pretty cool stuff. Uh, here's kind of some bad news, I guess. Brian Kelly, who he does not think there'll be any shot for a Bitcoin ETF in 2019. Uh, he does not think that the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission will approve a Bitcoin exchange traded fund in 2019. He just doesn't think that uh, they're going to change their minds about Bitcoin this year. It, it's going to take longer. Now, he does have some other good things to say about Bitcoin further down. Uh, but uh, the ETF thing was really kind of big last year, towards the end of the year. Uh, there was a lot of price movement thing in anticipation of the Bitcoin ETF, which is an exchange-traded fund where people can buy and sell Bitcoin, uh, you know, through their uh, brokers, like uh, Fidelity, those kind of people, Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, but it's not, probably not going to happen. This is just his opinion, Brian Kelly. 
So uh, whether that's going to be true or not, we don't know, but that's what he, his opinion, public opinion. Uh, what would happen if Ledger went out of business? That's a good question. Uh, if Ledger went out of business, you could use that 24-word recovery phrase to restore your wallets to different wallets. So, uh, you know, when you initialize this device and you get that 24-word recovery phrase and set up wallets, <clears throat> There are, uh, there are several wallets out there that support 24-word recovery phrase, uh, like Bitcoin wallets and, you know, Litecoin wallets. And, uh, you know, you, it wouldn't be easy, right? If you had, you know, five or six different cryptos on a ledger that were associated with a 24-word recovery phrase, you might be hard-pressed to uh, find the, the wallets that support that recovery phrase. But they will. Your 24-word recovery phrase is will allow you to uh, recover those wallets, even without a ledger. So if ledger goes out of business and the Ledger Nano S doesn't function anymore, um, then uh, you'll be able to recover using that 24-word recovery phrase. Now, that may not be... Uh, you know, totally, uh, there may be some wallets that you had that might not be recoverable. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that when you use a ledger, it does depend on the ledger website. Those of you who tried to upgrade your firmware recently found that out over the last few days that uh, you can't, you know, you definitely need to get access to... Uh, the ledger servers to uh, you know for this device to function properly so that uh, leads me into uh, what I want to do today uh, there was one more little story about uh, the ethereum hard fork has been delayed until February I think we talked about it last week about uh, that it would be the 17th of January but it, it's been delayed and it's, I, I don't know if there's going to be a, a new currency or if it's just going to be one of those uh, accepted. Everyone's going to accept the hard fork and it'll just go on as the same currency. We'll, we'll find out. Right? Uh, da, 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 da. Much longer in the stellar and to the stellar quite normal. Much longer so it's quite normal. Well, what is Bitcoin? As all these countries want to get away from sanctions, Bitcoin is the way. Yeah, uh, it is uh, a decentralized currency, not controlled by banks, uh, no international borders. Uh, you can send Bitcoin to anyone anywhere in the world, and you won't have any uh, currency conversion fees, any transfer fees, any you know international settlement fees. You just, I can send Bitcoin to someone in uh, China or France or Iceland um, and the only fees I incur are the built-in mining fees of the Bitcoin network so of course yeah if you wanted to avoid banking type sanctions you could uh, circumvent them uh, by using Bitcoin but that would also mean that the person you're dealing with if let's say you're Russia and you're trying to sell oil that would mean that the person on the other end would be able to pay you in Bitcoin uh, you know, or accept your Bitcoin. So uh, it takes two to tango. Um, I want to update the uh, hardware, uh, the firmware on this uh, ledger. I did a video on how to update the firmware, and thanks for all the views. Um, but there is a, a new version of the firmware out, and so the servers are running uh, quite slow. But uh, I'll go ahead and do it. So all you really need to do is first we'll connect our ledger. All right, and then uh, we'll just put in our pin. All right, and then once we've entered the pin, we're going to go over here to the manager. And you'll notice that the manager is running much slower than it normally runs. Uh, oh, and it is asking me to confirm on the device. Uh, 
right? So I'll hit the uh, button above the check. And then you kind of have to wait a bit for uh, the ledger to... Uh, at this point, it's communicating with the server. So it needs to connect to the ledger server. Now, normally, uh, you don't always need to connect to the ledger server. Um, when you're doing just a normal uh, Bitcoin transaction, I think it will allow you to uh, generate uh, a receiving address without having to interface with Ledger. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but... <clears throat> All right, so now that we've got this guy connected uh, and Manager is launched, uh, it wants to know if I'm ready to update it to the latest firmware. So I'll just click Update here. And let's see, uh, we're installing firmware. Uh, it, uh, it's probably not going to have enough room uh, because there's still some apps on here. Security improvements, new hashes. Actually, before I run this update, let me go ahead and delete these apps. There's three apps on here. There's Stellar, uh, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. So I'm going to delete them before I start the update because for some reason the update needs room and I think uh, someone at the very the first Cornelio mentioned that you're uh, it you end up with less space I I would I wish that were not the case but I believe he's right uh, because after I installed the uh, the firmware update on the white ledger I put Bitcoin and Ethereum on there and then Stellar wouldn't fit. And I before I could put Bitcoin, Ethereum, Stellar and Tron. So I believe he's right. I believe there's less room. All right, and then let's get Bitcoin off. So just you can just wipe all your apps off before you run this. And it's running much much faster than it was uh, when I did my video. Uh, the reason I did the video is because I was having so much trouble and I thought maybe some other people were too. So now we're down to just settings, right? And let's hit update. So uh, there's new algorithms, new hashes, uh, security improvements, uh, improved MCU genuine check, web USB enabled on dashboard, multiple apps at once yeah whatever <laughs> all right um, and then uh, they're looking for an identifier you want to see the identifier appear on the device all right so we'll wait and we'll see if that happens um, the other day it was I don't know it took maybe oh okay seems like it's doing it all right you see the processing here All right, so it's ready. And then you'll also notice that it's kind of scrolling that identifier. So I can uh, verify that the uh, identifier matches what I see on my screen uh, and what I see on the device. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, burp, burp. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that. And I have to enter my pin. I would recommend you guys use the eight uh, character pin. Uh, the longer the better, you know, if you can remember it. Hopefully I put in the right pin. <laughs> it will allow you to use a four digit pin, but you're better off with the eight. All right, and so here, now it wants me to update the MCU. So what I need to do is uh, disconnect, all right? Right? And then they want you to hold in the button that's closest to the plug, right? It looks, you know, right? It would be this one. Right? So I'm going to hold it in. While I'm holding it in, I'm going to connect the USB cable, right? And I'll continue to hold it in for a minute. And then it says bootloader, right? And then uh, it's going to update that and update MCU. 
and then uh, the firmware. Uh, yeah, you're not forced to use the the uh, firmware update, uh, but you're better off having the latest version of software. It you know everybody has a different opinion about updates when it comes to software and firmware. Um, firmware is a little tricky because it's hardware. Like I remember there were times where the firmware update kind of screwed up my uh, Mac laptop. Uh, I did a firmware update, and then for some reason the CD-ROM didn't work after that. Um, so I'm always a little bit leery of firmware. But uh, for a device like this where security is paramount, uh, I would recommend going ahead and doing the update. But you might end up with less space, right? So now uh, it's done. We'll close it, right? And then I just need to enter my pin again. One more time. One of the many times we've got to enter this pin over and over again. Ah, hooey. Huh. All right. Or do you just... Okay. There we go. Getting, uh... Oh, messed up. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm going to start over. <laughs> Sometimes I just get too out of whack here. All right, so we'll start from scratch. Okay, here we go. I think I got it now. All right, so it's acting like it's the first time I've ever used it because I took all the apps off. So I just hit both buttons, right? And then once that happens, it takes it a minute. Uh, I think I had a commenter that was telling me that after he hit both buttons, this thing went on forever. Uh, and then uh, you got to confirm again, right? And just wait, you know, uh, today it's, it's happening so much better than it was the other day when I did my video. But the problem that I was having was it was so out of the ordinary for me that I couldn't understand why it was taking so long and I was freaking out. Uh, and then I realized, oh, okay, just give it time and it'll be okay, right? So uh, let's put Bitcoin back on there first. Okay, so Chadwick is talking about he's running some ant miners. Uh, I'm jealous that you have some nice ant miners. Uh, I had an ant miner uh, back in 2013. I think it was the S5, maybe it was the S3. And yeah, it's hot and loud. Uh, I remember when I got it and turned it on, I just couldn't believe it. It was like, it sounded like a vacuum cleaner. So my solution, and uh, you know, I don't know if that's what you want to do. Uh, some people put them out in the garage where in, in a cold climate, uh, but I live in an apartment. It was here. So I had to put it somewhere. So I tried to buy like something I could cover it with, but that didn't work because when I covered it to reduce the noise, it got too hot inside. So uh, what I ended up doing was going out and buying some computer fans for it and they were high-speed computer fans but they weren't the ones that they came with it the ones that came with it were like industrial fans and they were like really loud so I took those off and put on my own fans and they they worked but not quite they didn't keep it quite as cool as the originals but it was a lot less noisy so it ran just a little bit hotter than it normally would, but it uh, didn't affect the
the performance that much. It, in other words, it didn't overheat. Now, maybe it affected the longevity. I ran it for about a year and a half. Uh, but that might be a solution if, if they're just like bugging you because they're so noisy. Okay, so Cryptoman's MCU stuck at 100%. So, uh, I guess I just got lucky. Uh, I've heard some horror stories uh, of people. Now, you might... Uh, I don't know if you could start over again uh, once the MCU uh, starts. Yeah, I'll, there were some troubleshooting steps you could take uh, in earlier firmware updates. But you, you guys saw that mine worked out okay. I'm going to go ahead and put Stellar on here because I'm going to buy some Stellar tonight. Oh, Crypto Man. Well, uh, worst case scenario when your ledger just totally ganks up is to buy another one, uh, have them send you a new one, and then uh, use restore to the new one so you can access your crypto again. Then you can work on getting your old one replaced. Uh, I think it depends on how much you need that crypto uh, or access to the crypto. If you've got a bunch of Bitcoin on there in long-term storage, uh, then you know you could just... I, I think when they get frozen like that, they're pretty much stuck. But you can send it back to Ledger, and uh, I don't think they can access the crypto on there without your PIN. Uh, and they could, at the very least, just re reinitialize the device and send you a new one. All right, so let me try to uh, answer some of the questions that are coming in. Uh, some of my, you know, I'm, I'm mostly a how-to so uh, I don't really give a lot of trading advice except uh, for, uh, you know, just do your research and try to stick to the top 10 or 20 if possible. So uh, we'll take a look at the markets. Bitcoin is around 3670 right now and most of the altcoins are down slightly. So, uh, and then any coin that you're interested in, uh, you'll want to like check it out. Uh, look at its chart. If you're, you know, a chart type person, look where it's been and look where it is now. And, you know, with crypto, it's been kind of a bear market. So, uh, they're all going to be down off their highs. So, uh, it's a pretty safe bet. If it's a solid crypto, that it will, uh, we will find that high again. Uh, now I may just being, I may just be optimistic, but uh, that would be my educated guess. And I'm not a financial advisor or anything. And any crypto is uh, at risk of just blowing up completely. Uh, there's been some talk about Ethereum, not. Uh, you know getting uh, replaced by other crypto so no one's really safe no no cryptos are altogether safe it's a very speculative investment right uh, so you look at your chart you look at uh, its market cap you look at its history you look at its use case what is it used for what is it good for that kind of thing what other people are saying about it Articles that are being written about it, what their com what direction their company is going in, uh, you know, new announcements, new partnerships, that kind of stuff. But specifically, uh, you know, like I would say, you asked, I think the question up there was, what are my top 10 tokens I would buy and hold? Um, I would just have to stick with the top 10, uh, top 20 in market cap. If you want some highlights, I would say, you know, Bitcoin is going to be around for a while. Uh, Litecoin has, is fast, has a good use case. Uh, some up and coming uh, Ethereum, uh, Tron, and Cardano are the, uh, is the machines, right? The virtual machines 
uh, that uh, run smart contracts and can issue their own sub tokens. So uh, you want to keep on an eye on those three. Uh, and but they're competitors. One might prevail over the another. All right. And then we have Stellar and Ripple or XRP that are uh, sort of a financial based type coins that are trying to uh, create an easier financial ecosystem uh, between different countries and people. Uh, so uh, those are two that you might want to keep an eye on, but they are also competitors. So one might knock the other out. Then you got your privacy coins like Monero. I believe Dash is a privacy coin. Zcash is a privacy coin. So, uh, and they're somewhat competitors as well. So you never know who's going to prevail. And, you know, at any time the, the government uh, might just say, hey, they're illegal. That's pretty much what India did. Uh, so there's always that risk that the government might just one day tell you that you know it's illegal to hold cryptocurrencies uh, we're hoping that that won't happen uh, but it's a possibility so and that's another argument for not keeping your crypto on exchanges when you buy crypto on an exchange move it to your own wallet uh, okay let's see what else we talked about ledger going out of business uh, some people are skipping firmware. That's uh, that's acceptable, as long as it still works. Uh, worked fine, Paul. Okay, yeah. Always back up your. Always make sure you know where that twenty-four word recovery phrase is. Uh, Hobby four two eight likes Tron. I like Tron. It's hard for me to understand why the Nano has such a small amount of storage when we can buy thumb drives with 128 gigabyte. Is all their info taking up a lot of space? Very good question, Betty. I have no idea what the capacity of this thing is. Uh, but I do know that there is circuitry in here uh, for uh, generating the encryption, which is you know specialized uh, circuitry. So uh, that might be taking up the majority of space inside this thing. And so they may not have room for, you know, storage, the app storage. Uh, but the, uh, the new one, the Ledger Nano X supposedly is uh, going to solve this issue by uh, having hundreds of apps available to be loaded at the same time. So we'll see. It looks like they've heard our complaints and that this new Ledger Nano X is going to solve this issue. But yes, I agree. Um, especially after the update, like I said, I put Bitcoin Ethereum on there and I couldn't get Stellar on there. So as you noticed, I just threw Bitcoin and Stellar on there. Uh, yeah, 128 gigabytes, you'd think it could store thousands of apps, right? But maybe the apps do take up quite a bit of space. I, I'm not sure. They have to implement, you know, crypto, uh, crypt, cryptographic algorithms. So maybe, you know, they have to uh, install the entire uh, Bitcoin uh, software on there to run. And it uh, takes up quite a bit of space. I know it's not downloading the entire blockchain, but it might, in order to have the the software to run, uh, maybe it does take up more space than we think, right? Maybe it takes up eight or nine gigabytes of space. And so that, that could quickly fill up even a 16 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte, maybe even 128. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a va very valid question. All right, so let's buy some Stellar. Uh, as you notice that I put Stellar on here uh, I've been gabbing away, so I'm going to re-enter my pin. All right, so we're going to need to go to the Stellar app. <laughs> Hit both oh. buttons. And then uh, you can go to the Stellar uh, Wallets website. I don't know why. I'm gonna 
update that. They it's hard to find from their homepage now. I don't know why, but anyway. So I uh, just linked to this. I copy. I saved this link. We'll go into the ledger. We'll use account viewer, and then I'm in the Stellar app, so I can sign in with my ledger. And you can see there is my Stellar, and then uh, this is my Stellar public address, right? So uh, how do we buy Stellar? Well, we can't buy it on. Uh, the most secure crypto. I don't know. That's that's a tough question. Uh, what there's there's many definitions of secure, uh, but you know they're all uh, verified and secured by cryptography. But there's that human element. You know, if you reveal your private key or your password, uh, you can get hacked. You know, if your computer is vulnerable, people can log your keystroke. So. Uh, you know, call how secure is a cryptocurrency depends on a lot of things, not just its inherent security, uh, but also the person using it as well. All things being equal, I don't know which would be considered the most secure. Uh, so let's go over to Coinbase. We'll sign in, and you'll see I've got a password manager here. It's called One Password. I can just uh, pull this draw uh, down and I need to enter my pin. Sorry, my master password. All right, and then uh, I've got my Coinbase login here. Just click it and it auto fills. And let's see here. Let's do our uh, two-factor authentication with our Google Authenticator and log in to our Coinbase account. All right. And you guys have seen me doing this before, so uh, I'm going to buy Litecoin because it's fast. I'm going to use my debit card because the purchase is instant. I'm going to buy uh, around $50 worth. You'll notice I had to pay $2.99 for that. So that's the hit that you take for the convenience uh, and speed of Coinbase. And, uh, you know, there's, it's not easy to buy Bitcoin. It never was really been easy to buy Bitcoin. I'd say Coinbase is one of the easiest ways to buy it. Right? And we're going to transfer it to an exchange that supports Stellar because they don't support Stellar, right? They don't sell Stellar on uh, Coinbase yet. It's getting close. I can buy BAT. Uh, there's there's quite a few, but not Stellar yet, right? Not available on Coinbase yet, right? All right. So I'm going to take that Litecoin that I just bought, and I'm going to move it into my uh, Coinbase Pro account. And the reason I'm doing that is to save on transfer fees. So Coinbase Pro, uh, all you have to do is uh, sign up for an account. If you already have a uh, Coinbase account, then uh, you'll just, when you go to Coinbase Pro, you'll just enter your credentials for your Coinbase account. And then you'll have like a sister account. Not the exact same thing, right? Coinbase, Coinbase Pro is a trading platform. Coinbase, plain old Coinbase, is more of a uh, beginner's uh, buy and sell kind of place. Right? So I'm going to take that Litecoin, I'm going to deposit it in my Coinbase Pro account. And I can take it right from my Coinbase wallet, right? I'll hit max and hit deposit. And there, I just moved it. And they didn't charge me uh, a penny for that. Right? So we can just refresh. And then let's take a look at where we are here. Uh, where is it? Where is that Litecoin, right? 1.65 Litecoin, right? <clears throat> now let's log into our Bittrex account. We're going to use Bittrex because uh, Bittrex supports Stellar, right? I want to buy some Stellar. You'll notice I can use my uh, password manager again to log in. And it wants me to do this. 
Hey, there's a bus way in the distance coming in. All right. Uh, we'll use two-factor authentication. This time my Bittrex. Ah, didn't quite take. It says I'm logged in. That's kind of weird. Every now and then it just kind of misses a little bit. So here we go again. That's a van, not a tractor. That's all right. Patience is the key when you're dealing with these kind of things. Maybe I entered the wrong code. I don't know. But I got an email alert that says I was logged in. Say la vie. All right, so now we're logged in, and we're going to go over here to uh, wallets. Now, the first thing I need to do is put in that Litecoin, right? So I'll need to deposit my Litecoin to fund this account. So I'm going to make a deposit. I'm going to copy that uh, Litecoin address into my clipboard. And let's go back over here, and we're going to do a withdrawal of Litecoin to our Bittrex address and it's I've used it before and I'm gonna send it all it's about fifty one dollars and seventy three cents and I need my coinbase uh, two-factor authentication uh, the coinbase two-factor is the same as the or uh, the coinbase pro uses your coinbase two-factor authentication they're basically the same account all right so now uh, we're gonna have to kill some time while we wait for this uh, Litecoin to go over to uh, Bittrex All right uh, we can kind of go uh, here to uh, wallets and withdrawals and let's do a refresh here and so you can confirm that the Litecoin went out right and where is it going? It's going here. So we know we sent our Litecoin to the place we intended, right? All right, so now all we have to do is wait for the Litecoin. And the Litecoin shouldn't take too long. It's going to be a few minutes before we see it as a pending deposit. All right, so let's uh, close some of these. All right. We'll hang loose here. I don't need Coinbase anymore. Uh, got that. All right. Oh, um, so any of you that uh, are interested in the Trezor, uh, I got an email from uh, the Trezor marketing department, and they liked my channel, and they were uh, interested in me doing some videos on the Trezor. So they sent me a code to get discounted Trezors. So I've got, oops. I've got the uh, whoop, Trezor 1, Mo I'm sorry, the Model T Trezor, which uh, has more features than the, you know, just the regular old Trezor. Sorry about that. Chrome, uh, I forget what they call that. Trezor White, uh, you call that uh, Chroma Key. That's what I use. Oh, uh, and also, uh, for those of you who are interested or may or may not be interested, hopefully you're interested. Uh, let's see, Corsair. All right, so Corsair has uh, uh, this thing. This Elgato key light, and then they also have, huh. Oh, oh, I need to go to Elgato. Pardon me, here we go. Uh, I guess uh, Corsair owns them. So I'm waiting for this light. They don't have the light yet. I'm still using an umbrella light. But I did buy this guy. And this thing is like totally, totally cool. 
uh, I used to have a green screen behind me that uh, it was several pieces. I had to set it up. I had to set up stands and a crossbar and throw this uh, green sheet over it and then clamp it down tight so it looked good. And it was kind of a pain to set up and put it put up and tear down. This guy is like just so totally cool. You just set it on the ground. It comes in this case. You just set it on the ground. You flip out the legs and then you pull it up. And it's just like see how easy it is. You just pull it up and you set it. So that's what I'm using now, and I couldn't be happier. This thing is just like so cool. And then when I'm done with my videos, I just like, you know, just take it up, grab it, push it down, close the case, and put it away. It takes me like less than 30 seconds. Whereas before, it was a whole process I had to go through. So that thing's really cool. All right, where are we? What do I think of Monero? Uh, I like Monero. Uh, it's one of the original privacy coins, right? As you can see, Monero is number 14 in market cap. It's been around for a while. Uh, it's, you know, it's fairly expensive. It's way off its high, right? Its high was like 342 back in January or higher. Let's see, I don't know if that's the high. You can get it up there. Yeah, that's about its high, 342 bucks. So it's a privacy-based coin. Um, so like uh, for a Bitcoin transaction, I can put in my Bitcoin address, uh, my, my public address, and I can look at it anywhere. Uh, anyone can see the transactions that have come to that address. So if anyone knows that that's my address, they can just, if I say, hey, send me some Bitcoin, they can send me some Bitcoin to that address and then they can take my address and go to a Bitcoin a blockchain explorer and see all of my transactions to that address. Right? Monero is not like that. If you use if you send somebody Monero and then you take their public address and try to look at their transactions, it won't let you, right? It'll tell you, hey, you appear to be trying to look at this dude's transactions or something like that. So it's much more privacy based, right? How well it protects your privacy, uh, only the NSA would know that for sure, right? But it's definitely more privacy oriented than Bitcoin. Uh, and it is primarily a currency and you can mine it if you're interested. And uh, it's been around for a while, right? So we can look at its all and we can see that uh, it goes back to uh, 2014. Right, all the way back when it was a dollar forty-one. So uh, Monero is a pretty solid coin, right? It's in the top twenty, in the top fifteen. So we can look at their website and find out more about Monero. Uh, the the only thing I don't like about Monero is that they're, they're always upgrading their software and their algorithm, and you constantly have to uh, keep updating your wallet so that they sync right to the blockchain. So uh, it's and it's not for the faint of heart, right? You have to be a little bit technically oriented to deal with Monero, right? But uh, it's a cool coin, right? PayPal on Coinbase's withdrawals only. Uh, does Coinbase Coinbase accept PayPal? Uh, okay, uh, so for Coinbase, I don't know that. They uh, accept PayPal. They might. Uh, most of, so your payment method would, uh, there's the bank, you connect your bank, or it will allow you to connect a debit card. Uh, I don't see PayPal. Now, if you had a PayPal debit card, maybe, I don't know. Uh, wire transfer, you can wire transfer money into your Coinbase account. So there are several ways to get uh, your Coinbase account funded with uh, everyday fiat currency, US dollars. Right. So uh, it supports uh, regular debit cards. 
So yeah, I don't know about PayPal, for sure. Uh, and then the limits. When you first set up your account, you're gonna have uh, some limits, right? You can see my daily bank limit is twenty-five thousand, and my daily or my weekly uh, uh, debit is five thousand. Uh, now I've I've heard that uh, when you first set it up, it's a lot less. You know, it's like five hundred dollars. Your weekly limit is five hundred, but the more you use Coinbase. Uh, the the higher your your limit tends to get. The more you buy on Coinbase, uh, you know they see you're a regular customer and that it's not fraud. Uh, you know you're just a normal guy that buys a lot. They will start to up your limit over time. Uh, I couldn't tell you how long it took me to get to five thousand. I've had my Coinbase account for coming up on two years, so uh, you know. And then I hear a lot of people when they first sign up for Coinbase. Uh, it takes them a really long time to verify their bank account. So uh, things can happen, right? Oh, okay. Oh, you can withdraw to PayPal. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, that is true. You're right. I heard that the, they will allow that. Uh, so let's see here. I believe when you go to your cash... See, I can't... The withdraw is... Uh, uh, dimmed out because I don't have any uh, money in the wallet but yes I believe when you do your withdrawal you can withdraw uh, out to your bank account or uh, I don't think you can withdraw back to your debit card but you can send it back to the bank account that you have linked or PayPal I guess PayPal gives you uh, pretty high fees so uh, let's say you had a thousand dollars that you withdrew from coinbase into your paypal account now if you use that to buy things on the internet you'd be okay but if you wanted to move that off of paypal into your bank account they're charging you like 10 percent now to withdraw your money from paypal uh, it's getting crazy so uh, you take a big hit uh, and then like if you sent paypal to someone else you get hit with a big fee from PayPal. So I don't know that PayPal is uh, the most uh, frugal way to cash out. You're probably better off going straight into your bank account and then putting it, uh, you know, taking it out of the ATM. I think if you went from Coinbase to bank to cash, uh, as opposed to going Coinbase to PayPal to cash, you'd end up with more cash in your hand through your bank. PayPal uh, takes a lot of fees out. Let's see where we are here. All right, so we're still pending on the uh, the Litecoin. Uh, we're still two of six, uh, so it's probably going to be another 10 or 15 minutes. It just depends on how busy they are. And once we do that, we'll, uh, we'll sell our Litecoin for Bitcoin. We'll use our Bitcoin to buy our uh, Stellar and we'll move the Stellar into our wallet. You can withdraw to PayPal, but you can't deposit with PayPal. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay, you've got Ledger Live. Uh, I believe, uh, let's go to Portfolio. I believe Ledger Live, if you go up here to this gear, I'm frozen. If you go up to this gear, and pull down, um, I believe in the about, it'll tell you here, like version. If you're on this version, it should, instead of details, it should say update. I, I might be wrong about that. But I believe, and then I think usually when you first log into Ledger Live, if there's an update, it just pops up at the top here. It'll just tell you that there's an update available and then you can just click that link and if it doesn't show there then maybe just like exit and uh, relaunch and see if you'll if you get that because generally it'll it's going to show it to you whenever you log in if there's a update to the software uh, 
so and you don't need to worry about the ledger uh, the device doesn't need to be connected to update the ledger live software it's completely independent the updates to the ledger live are independent of the ledger now the firmware update that's a whole different story we went through that earlier so uh, that that's a little dance between the two but the the software itself uh, should uh, and and uh, before you do that uh, firmware you have to be at 1.3 so yeah that would be my advice relaunch it to see if you get that alert that tells you there's an update or go to settings about and see if you can update from here that might be your way to do it oh thank you crypto dread yeah, that's right. You should, uh, when you first launch Ledger Live, there should be a blue update button along the top here. It'll tell you there's an update available. I don't know if it's at the home screen or, or in the manager, uh, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that it shows up here at the home screen. Are there other exchanges that accept U.S. dollar? Uh, yeah, there are. Um, not quite as easy as Coinbase. <clears throat> so, for example, uh, we're on Bittrex here. I, this particular account does not have access to... Uh, I haven't set up the uh, banking access, but th there is a mechanism... Bittrex is an American company. They're based out of San Francisco. There is a mechanism to connect your bank account. And when you do so, you can uh, fund the account from your bank account with like a wire transfer. But it's, uh, it's like the, the minimum is $1,000. So you kind of have to be a high roller if you want to use fiat to fund your Bittrex account. But you can. So uh, if not Coinbase... My next bet, bet would be Bittrex, right? Now, there's others. Uh, there's Uphold. Uh, your Uphold uh, wallet. Uh, Uphold is a little bit of a hot wallet. You don't really control the private keys with Uphold. It's kind of a web-based hot wallet. But it, it's sort of a cross between a wallet and an exchange. Because you can fund uphold with uh, a debit card um, let's log in I think crypto dad ah boy it let me in usually they want my uh, two-factor authentication but maybe they've just uh, logged this device so as you can see uh, if I go over to cards um, hmm I thought I had set up my uh, ATM card here. Not quite sure where it is. Oh, view all cards? No. <laughs> anyway, you can. Uh, I've done it. Uh, oh, 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 sorry, sorry. You go into the card. <laughs> you go into the card, and then you say uh, transfer between your cards. That's send to bank account. Ah, here we go. Add funds. There we go. There we go. There we go. We go add funds, and then you can fund from a debit card, bank account. Uh, now their fees are kind of high. Uh, you know, so so is uh, Coinbase. But it is an alternative to Coinbase. And they're reputable. But the, their fees are a bit high. And uh, same thing with uh, Coinbase. You don't want to keep your coins there uh, if you have a lot of coins. If you want to trade, okay, keep your coins there. Uh, <laughs> so Uphold is another uh, reputable uh, U.S.-based firm that will allow you to fund with fiat. Right, there's a lot of uh, cryptocurrency exchanges that you can fund with fiat, 
but they don't all accept uh, debit, right? Like Bittrex, uh, it has to be a bank account. All right, let's see where we're at here. Okay, so there, our Litecoin is now available. So uh, let's go LTC to Bitcoin, right? So I'm going to uh, sell my Litecoin for Bitcoin, right? So we look over here on the sell side, and we see that's a bid, right? So we go down here to ask, we go to bid, and then I'll just roll down here to max sell, right? I want to sell all the Litecoin for Bitcoin, right? So I'm going to hit sell Litecoin. I'm going to confirm that. Right, and the order went through right away, right? I sold Litecoin for Bitcoin. Now I have Bitcoin. Now, uh, what did we want to buy? We want to buy Stellar. So that's uh, X, whoops, XLM Lumen, right? They call it Lumen. It's actually Stellar Lumen, but uh, XLM, right? So we want to buy XLM, we want to buy Lumen, and we have some Bitcoin, right? About 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin. So over here on the buy side, we've got this ask. So I need to switch this to ask, right? And I'm gonna scroll down here to max buy. And I'm gonna get 478 uh, Lumen, right? With the Bitcoin that I have. So I'm gonna confirm that. And it, the order uh, executed right away. Right, so now I can go over to my wallets and let's just exit this out. You can see the balance is already available. So, uh, you know, they are a, a cryptocurrency exchange. They provide liquidity. Uh, and so they can do uh, a, a, like almost instantaneous transfer between cryptocurrencies. Now there were uh, trading fees there. Uh, I, I, I shaved a little of my money when I did those trades because there were trading fees. So you got to keep that in mind as well. So what do we want to do? We want to take this uh, Stellar that we bought on uh, Bittrex and we want to put it in our Stellar wallet. You know, the wallet that's connected to this ledger. Uh, or more specifically, the uh, private key for the Stellar wallet is stored safely on this Ledger Nano S, right? And then we entered the Stellar app and we're accessing that private key that's giving us access to this wallet, right? Uh, so I have this uh, public address, the Stellar public address. Let's go over here to Bittrex and we'll go to our Lumen wallet and let's do a withdrawal. All right, uh, the wallet address. You have to be kind of careful about this. So the wallet address is here. Right? I don't need to worry about this uh, memo. Uh, the memo is for uh, like some retailers use it when they have like this basket wallet where they have one wallet address and separate memos. But we're sending it to my personal wallet. I don't need a memo, right? So I can just check this box off. I don't care about the memo, right? How much am I gonna take out? I can just click the amount here and just take out all of it, right? And they're gonna charge me 0.01 Stellar Lumens to do this withdrawal. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we need the two-factor authentication for the Bittrex account. So we'll enter that. and hit withdraw. And you see down here the withdrawal has been submitted. So we can just go over here and just kind of keep an eye on this. And while I blab, 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 we'll wait for the uh, balance to update. Uh, okay. Thanks so much, not a high roller. Yeah, uh, if you're not a high roller, then I would suggest Coinbase. It's pretty uh, easy to use. Uh, it's a safe platform. Uh, you know, it's U.S. based. Uh, it has to adhere to U.S. laws. So your money is safe on Coinbase uh, within reason, right? But you still, uh, it's not the best place to store cryptocurrency. Uh, as you noticed, as soon as I bought it, I moved it somewhere else, right? 
we we uh, transferred to Bittrex. We made our trade. We bought our cryptocurrency that we were interested in, and then uh, we pulled it back out to our own wallet. So the idea of the cryptocurrency uh, community uh, at large is you uh, you want to store cryptocurrency in your own wallet where you you control the private key. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enter my PIN again. I don't really need to. I think it would, uh, it'll update eventually. But I'm just going to, like, give it a refresh. So I need to have the PIN entered. Just because I'm a little bit impatient. This is always the moment of truth, right? When you're waiting for your cryptocurrency. Oh, there it goes. All right. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to get the pin entered and the balance is already updated, right? So there we go. So now the Stellar is stored in this ledger, not in this ledger device. It's stored on the Stellar blockchain. But in order to move this crypto anywhere, it needs to, I need to grant access using the buttons and then the private key that is stored inside this ledger will uh, allow this wallet to be accessed, right? Anyone can send me Stellar because anyone can see this address. That's the public address. That's just your, like your, just like your home address, right? Anyone can send you a piece of mail if they know your home address. But, uh, you know, you're the only one that can send mail out, right? <laughs> I'm assuming. Uh, it's not quite the perfect analogy. Uh, with cryptocurrency, the con whoever controls the private key owns the crypto, right? And everything is stored in here. And in your uh, recovery phrase. So keep your recovery phrase in a safe place because that also can uh, give access to the wallets. So you don't want that just laying around, right? And if you lose your ledger, if your ledger gets destroyed, uh, damaged, uh, immersed in water, where whatever happens, all you gotta do is do a restore on a new ledger and all your money is safe, right? You'll still have access to all of your money. Chadwick Austin has 478 bitcoins that he bought in 2001. I'd like to know the end of that story. <laughs> I had two bitcoins in 2014 and I spent a bitcoin and a half. And then I held on to what was left over until uh, about 2017. So uh, it worked out for me, but I sure wish I had held on to both of those, the you know, the two big ones. But I, I have no regrets. I, you know, at the time I had broken even after I had mined my little ant miner S3 or S5 or whatever it was for a year and a half. I had broken even and I bought a hard drive, a solid state drive that I, I still use today. Good solid state drive. So I have no regrets. I don't know if you had 478 bitcoins, then uh, and you still have them, then congratulations. Uh, last night is telling me it's still Ledger Live 1.3 point. Well, it should be. It should be Ledger Live 1.3. That's the latest version. <laughs> I think he fixed it. Right, so the latest version is 1.3.0. So from there, you should be able to run your uh, firmware update. Uh, how safe is the Tron wallet when using the Ledger Nano S? Um, pretty safe. Uh, it's it's the same security that all of the cryptocurrencies use on the uh, Ledger Nano S, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see if Tron will fit on here, and we'll uh, I'll show you Tron. So the private key for the Tron private key is stored on the device, and so the only way to send out 
Tron is by uh, confirming on the device. So let's see if it fits. Yeah, I think a couple of people uh, mentioned that uh, you get less storage when you update the Ledger Nano S to the latest firmware, which is a little bit concerning. But supposedly the security is better, right? All right. So um, the thing with the Tron on the Ledger is that um, there's not that many wallets out there that support the ledger, right? So if you go to, yeah, I'm sorry. If we go to Tron and we go to the Tron Scan Explorer and you try to sign in, hey, they support ledger now. Isn't that cool? See, they didn't support ledger about a week ago. That's one thing I like about Tron is they're constantly updating their software. All right, so let's use Ledger from the Tron website and see how that works. So I'm going to hit Ledger, and it wants me to open Tron on my device. All right, so I've got Tron, and let's uh, enter Tron. So uh, it's accessing the private key, um, and then I can sign in. And yeah, there it is. So that's the Tron balance in the uh, wallet associated with the private key on here. Now, if I want to send that Tron somewhere else, then I need to confirm with the buttons, right? It's the same security as the Bitcoin wallet, the Litecoin wallet, anything else, right? <coughs> so uh, let's send the Tron somewhere. Uh, let's send it to the phone wallet. Uh, let's do that. All right. All right. Let's go to our Tron wallet. And this is on my phone. It's got face ID. Now, the only thing is I need that uh, Tron uh, address, right? So I'm just going to mail it to myself. I'm kind of lazy. I've mailed it to myself before, but uh, I'd have to be scrolling through all my emails to figure it out. Yeah. So, uh, All right, so let's let's go back to Tron. All right, so we'll go. Uh, sorry, got to look at it. Mm -hmm. Hi there. All right. All right, so we'll just put that down for a second. It will. Uh, it's gonna take me a minute to do this. So let's go over to my email. Let's take that, let's get that Tron address that I just emailed to myself. All right, so that's the Tron address of the phone wallet, right? So what I want to do is uh, let's go in to the wallet and send, right? And how much is there? There's, let's send 500 to the wallet. So first we'll pop in that address. All right, and then uh, let's put 500 Tron as our amount, and then we're going to hit send. And I'll go ahead and get the phone up so that you can see the Tron come into the phone. Should be there. There it is. Okay. All right, we'll just keep an eye on that. And it's gonna, we're gonna hit send, and I have to confirm, right? Now, this is the security, right? It wants me to confirm on the device. So that's our security. And it's asking me to confirm 500 and the address. Well, it's not switching. Anyway, so it's, we'll hit that button, and I confirm the transaction. See how easy that was? And that was the security.
And oh my gosh, it happened too quick. I, I received payment. Let's get that down again. Uh, you have received payment from uh, this address. And let's see here. I was trying to go to the... Um, okay, there it is. So we just sent the Tron. Uh, there it was. Okay. Well, I don't know where it is. <laughs> but we're, our balance went up, right? So we sent the Tron from the uh, Ledger wallet to the uh, phone-based Tron wallet. And I'm, I'm going to refresh this. And it's going to ask me to do this business again. And see there, the balance is now lower. And the balance on the phone is now higher. Right? So we successfully sent Tron uh, from a, a desktop-based wallet to a phone-based wallet. And uh, it was a wallet that was, the private key was on the ledger, right? So the only way that I could send Tron out from that wallet was by me holding the device and clicking the button. That's the hardware security of the Ledger Nano S. So that's fun, right? That was fun. <laughs> I love playing with cryptocurrency. And the, the cool thing about Tron is they send you all of these tokens. See all these tokens? They just send them to me. Actually, I bought some of them. I bought some of these, the Tron Watch Market. Uh, but a lot of these were just like sent to me for no particular reason. <laughs> uh, let's see. ERC20. I guess I have no ERC20 tokens in this particular wallet. But that's okay. There are a lot of, uh, when Tron first came out, there was a lot of TRC-10 tokens that people were just creating and uh, air, airdropping to anyone that had a Tron wallet. So uh, someday these tokens might be worth something and you can buy and sell them on these Tron DEXs, right? So if we go to this Tron market, Am I signed in? Yeah, should be signed in. Let's go back. Yeah, it should show that I have some Tron. Oh, here, yeah, down here. See, it's telling me I have 10,000 Tron available. So I could buy and sell on this uh, decentralized uh, DEX uh, for Tron. So uh, let, uh, let's see. Tron Watch Market. Uh, yeah, let's buy a little bit of Tron Watch Market and I'll show you how the uh, security works. So let's go ahead and just buy Tron Watch Market, uh, what, 500? How much estimated cost 500 Tron? Let's do let's go ahead and just we'll do 300 Tron right we'll buy the Tron watch market whoops didn't like that <laughs> all right I'm just gonna quit the app and uh, re-enter make sure that I'm signed in all right we'll go back to this market we'll go to the Tron watch market We'll try to buy some Tron. Uh, boom. Ah. Well, something's going on here. I don't know why. It should allow me to do this. Huh. Well, it's not perfect. Let me see if it'll do it this way. Ah, okay. See, now it wants... <laughs> I, I, I left the Tron app. Let's go in to Tron app, and it's not working. So uh, I think we're doing it right. I just think we're having some problems. So uh, they just added support for the ledger. So that could be the issue. 
So maybe next week I'll uh, do some of these trades for you using the ledger-based wallet. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks for everything. Cardano? No, not yet. I don't believe you can uh, store uh, Cardano on the ledger. Right. Uh, let's look over here. So if you're curious whether uh, a coin is supported on Ledger, just go to Crypto Assets on their homepage. And by the way, don't forget the Ledger Nano X is coming out. Uh, you can pre-order now if you want. Oops, sorry, I went to the wrong. The question is uh, from Abdullah, is, uh, is Cardano supported on the Ledger yet? Uh, and the answer, I believe, is no. Not yet. Uh, and there's also uh, talk of Cardano being available on Coinbase. But that's also a not yet. Uh, there's quite a few assets that are, there's hundreds, thousands, because they support ERC-20 tokens, right? Which is a little disingenuous because they don't really support ERC-20 tokens on Ledger Live. But you can store them because you can store Ethereum. Uh, on a ledger. So an Ethereum address supports all the ERC-20 tokens. So anyway, no Cardano. Uh, you could search it and it's not there yet, right? Let's hope so. Let's hope so soon. Thank you, Betty. I always appreciate you dropping in along with the rest of the guys and the gang. Uh, don't mean to sound sexist, but it's nice to see some females that are interested in cryptocurrency. Uh, I'm just, it's just my experience that it's more guys now. Uh, I would love that it were as many guys as gals, but my experience has been it's mostly uh, guys. So uh, it's always refreshing to see uh, a smart female that's interested in crypto. That's really cool. Uh, there have been some other uh, female participants on the uh, live stream as well so it's it's always nice I actually I think there's a there's several other females that are watching besides you <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to leave anybody out but thanks Betty um, so I I hope that I got to everybody's question uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the live stream Good luck updating your firmware. Uh, congratulations if you buy uh, a Ledger Nano X. I know I'm excited. And I'm going to do some Trezor videos in the near future. I'm going to unbox these guys and uh, do some videos for anyone that's interested in Trezor. I don't want you guys to think that I'm, you know, just pushing Ledger all the time. I just, I like Ledger and it was the first hardware wallet I bought. But uh, I'm open to any good uh, solid wallet that uh, you could store your crypto on. All right, guys. Uh, and I will try to get another a video done on Atomic Wallet, too. So uh, subscribe to me, uh, and I'll, you'll get alerts whenever I post new videos. Don't forget to join me here every Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, the live Q&A in L.A., uh, same time next week. I hope to see you guys there, and I'll do my best to answer questions on the fly to the best of my ability. Oops. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me, and hope to see you again soon.